The theory of constraints, what is it and how does it help us solve problems? Let's have a look at an example. We have a manufacturer of toys who produces action figures. And this manufacturer can produce three action figures per hour with the machinery and the resources that he has. Now, if he actually needs to produce five or six per hour, then that is a problem. The process is not performing as it should. The theory of constraints actually helps us to improve that performance by identifying and exploiting the bottleneck of that process, which is going to be the learning goal for today. Well, first of all, what is a bottleneck? Imagine this, a 10-lane highway, 200 cars per minute can pass through with a high speed. At some point, the following happens. This flow gets blocked because of this sheep on the road. And instead of 200 cars being able to pass every minute, only two cars can pass every minute. Does the throughput rate or the amount of cars that can pass through the entire stretch of the highway, is that now the 200 or the two per minute? It's the latter, it's two per minute because the pace of the performance or the throughput rate is determined by the slowest or weakest part of the chain which is called the bottleneck by the way looking back at that situation i, I don't really think that in the middle of los angeles you could see something like that but uh, well never say never never say never it could just happen that near, near hollywood you have this this uh, this this uh, scene but it's, it's very very unlikely anyway we continue so what can we do in order to improve the performance of the process? We have five steps. First one is about identifying the bottleneck. Second step is about exploiting the bottleneck. We subordinate the system to that bottleneck. We elevate and we repeat the whole process. So what is the meaning of all that? Well, let's, let us have a look at the following example. Now, by using this example, we actually take you through all the steps that my colleague just pointed out. We have here a process for checking whether a student at a university is entitled for a scholarship or not. Step one is checking the scholarship application. It takes 15 minutes per student. Step two is categorize the applications by GMAT results. GMAT result is something like an IQ test, but specially designed for business studies. It takes 20 minutes per student. And then we have step three and step four, which concludes the process. And the times that are mentioned there are the time that is needed actually per application. Now, the first thing that we have to do is identify the bottleneck. Now, what is the bottleneck here in this situation? So we have to look up for this lowest step from all. And we can see that clearly step number two with its 20 minutes per application is the one that is the slowest. So in that sense, it is comparable to that part of the highway where we had the sheep and is going to determine the speed of the process. So at the fastest rate, every 20 minutes, one student can be processed. Or three applications per hour. Because it doesn't matter that four scholarship applications can be checked per hour because each one of them costs 15 minutes. Because what matters is that they get piled up at step two and they cannot continue at a faster pace than one per each 20 minutes. So that means that at the most, three applications can be processed per hour. And right after step two, all those step three takes only 15 minutes and step four only takes 10 minutes, they will only get applications every 20 minutes. And that is because of step number two. Now step two is to exploit the bottleneck. The objective is improve the rate of the constraining process or the bottleneck. So for instance, by using Kaizen. Kaizen is this concept from Lean, which means that every day you try to improve a process little by little, incrementally, by making the process more lean. Okay, we have a host of lean methods to get rid of waste, which is explained in detail in our lean management course. But suppose that after a while, you can shave off a little bit time from step two. Instead of 20 minutes, it now costs 18 minutes. Now, why 18? Why not 17.5? It's just an arbitrary choice we made. Don't get lost in that. But you shaved off some time. So once you actually shaved off the time from step two, 
and you brought it down to 18 minutes from 20 minutes you're not done because now you have a system that is not in balance okay if you look at for instance step one every 15 minutes something is delivered to step two and in, before step two the work heaps up you get like a traffic in front of step two just like you got a traffic in front of those sheep when that 10 lane highway got obstructed well those sheep are comparable to what we see in step two it slows everything down slow, step two so what you want is you want to have a nice even flow so you have to subordinate or adjust the rates of the other processes in the chain to match that of the constraining process to match the bottleneck so now what you have to do is something extremely counterintuitive and that is to take step one which is uh, rather fast takes 15 minutes and slow it down okay take step three which took 15 minutes and slow it down take step four which took 10 minutes and slow it down slow it down to the rate of the bottleneck so we want to do this very counterintuitive thing which is to reduce the speed of certain processes how do we do that well one option is a reallocation of workers so we can take away workers from a workstation that just runs very fast and reuse those workers for that station that is running very slow. By doing so, it will affect the rate of production. So now we can produce less or we can produce the amount that is needed. Additionally to all this, we can also modify the number of shifts that we need. We can go from three to two to one shift as needed. And, and all of this combined brings down basically the rate uh, of a sub-process, which is what we actually were looking for. Now, step four is to elevate, revise and invest in additional equipment or new technology when possible. Look, you're not done. When you shaved off two minutes from step two and brought it from 20 minutes to 18 minutes, that was just an in-between step. Your next goal is to bring that 18 minutes to 16 minutes, to 16 minutes to 14, etc., etc. Shave off as much as you can for as long as you can. And once you shaved off something from step two, make sure that you repeat what you did in step three, namely rebalance the whole thing. Now, step four can go on for a very long time. And at some point, you will find that the internal structure of your process is the way you want it. Now, step five is to repeat everything, but now taking into consideration the external environment. For that, we're going to go back to our toy manufacturer that produced toys. Eh? I suppose that they wanted to produce five and they managed to produce five of these toys actually per hour. Problem seems to be solved, but not really, because between these toys and the market is the salesman. And the salesman is, an, is in a way an external actor, because if this salesman can only sell two of these per hour to the market, then you still have these things heaping up. You still have a bottleneck. It's just that this bottleneck is now the salesman, which is outside the manufacturing process. Then you basically repeat all of the things that you just did, but now apply it on the salesman or whatever external actor is limiting your throughput rate or your speed. That's it for this session. Thank you so much for your attention.